Hey sightseers, sightseeing Sally here and Marty. And today we are checking out Valentine. <laughs> Have to <laughs> forgive Marty, his attention spans about the big. Yes, we're in Valentine, Texas, and you might be wondering what's here in Valentine other than a really cool name. Well, that's what we're here to find out. Now, according to what I read online, Valentine was originally established as a watering and fuel stop for the railroad. And supposedly, as legend has it, the town was named Valentine because on the day that the rail crew got here and finished laying track, happened to be Valentine's Day, and so the crew, being the love-struck romantics that they were, named the stop Valentine. But that's one version of several different accounts. And so it is believed that the actual real story is that the town was named after John Valentine, president of Wells Fargo, who happened to be a major stakeholder in the railroad. Too bad we didn't come here on Valentine's Day. You could send me or give me your Valentine here at Valentine. Yeah, okay. See how romantic he is. But speaking of romantic, there are people out there who purposely send their Valentines here to the post office ahead of Valentine's Day, just so they can get their Valentine's postmark with the official Valentine stamp. For an itty bitty town out in the middle of nowhere, having the distinction of being one of two places in the country where you can get an authentic Valentine's Day stamp and postmark for your sweetheart is really quite something, especially considering that the design for the stamp comes from one of the town's own students and has reportedly gone out to as many as 26 different countries across the world. Back over in this area, there's a bunch of foundations and stuff. It looks like the kids over here took one of them and made themselves a little skate park over here in all this brush. Check out the old pecker heads cleaning service. Cleaning up the old bones on top. Oh, that is nifty. Somebody has a sense of humor and creativity in making that. Marty's wishing he had a skateboard to try it out. Skater Marty. If you look, you can see that for a small town, they are quite set up with modern infrastructure, such as that cell tower in the distance. Marty's always concerned about things like that, so I bet you if we go ask him, He'll know exactly how fast that cell signal is. How fast is the internet speed here, or at least the cell speed? About 30 meg for download. Uploads around 1 meg, which isn't real fast, but for streaming movies it's good and surfing the net. Now it's my understanding from when we came through here last time, Yes, we had to drive through Valentine to get to the Prada installation, the Marfa Prada installation. So we had scoped it out a little bit. And as I was saying, from that little bit that we saw, there are no gas stations here. There's very few services whatsoever. And so this is the type of town where you don't want to end up running out of gas. And given its location, being somewhere between like 30 and 40 miles from the nearest town, I'm guessing if you live here, you probably drive around with a gas tank or some sort of fuel, extra fuel tank in the back of your vehicle. 
see what I mean about the residents having extra tanks, fuel tanks on their vehicles. I thought where we lived was being out in the middle of nowhere. This is definitely being out in the middle of nowhere. That, by the way, may have been an old service station at one point. We're gonna take a little drive down Main Street just so you can see what is left here in Valentine on Main. So far, a whole lot of nothing but brush, some bushes, mesquite probably, maybe uh, some yucca plants down there. Not real sure because I'm not an expert on desert flora, but I can tell you that off in the distance you're going to start seeing some of the adobe structures that were likely leveled during that earthquake of 1931. I believe it was August 16th of 1931 where it was like a 5.2, eh, I think anywhere between like 5.2 and 5.8 maybe magnitude earthquake that hit and Valentine was in the epicenter of that quake. While there are differing accounts online as to the severity and magnitude of the quake, one thing's certain, it was the largest earthquake in Texas history. Fortunately, no one was killed, though a few minor injuries were reported. In total, damage costs to Valentine were estimated to be between $50,000 and $75,000 in 1931 dollars. Apparently when that earthquake hit, it was so strong that it actually twisted some of the headstones around in the cemetery. Well, that looks like the house that was there is gone. All that's left is a pile of rubble. Here's some more adobe structures here. I really see on the far left, adobe brick. Yeah, the adobe brick you can see. Right there. From what I understand, just about every building here in town suffered damage. The exception was buildings made out of wood, out of the old sticks and bricks framed houses. So considering where we're at and that the majority of the buildings here are made out of adobe, you pretty much guess that most of the town suffered damage from that earthquake. I almost said hurricane, but obviously there are no hurricanes here in this part of Texas. Now, some people would call Valentine a ghost town, but they do have a school here. If you look on the water towers, you can see the name of their mascot is the Pirates. It's a K through 12 school. And over the years, you know, they've graduated anywhere between like maybe five, 10 to as little as one or two individuals from the high school. That's a far cry from the hundred and some that I graduated with, and I thought that was a small graduating class. There's the buses for the school. Pretty quiet here. I imagine not a whole lot goes on which would be fine by me. I wouldn't mind living in a place like this, quiet all the time, just give me a pile of junk to pick through, you know, the old tin cans out in the desert or broken glass shards that you can find, and I'd be happy, happy as a fat old weird dog sunning himself out outside. I'm shooting this one from the safety of the truck. There was a dog out. It was loose, did not look very friendly, and I don't know about you, but I really didn't feel like risking a dog bite today. But I'm looking at the church here in Valentine, which appears to still be active. The sign says that it's the community church, which I'm guessing as to the denomination being some sort of... It's a loose type of religious try to fit everybody in town probably. I don't want to say Christian because you know that's making the assumption but definitely not Catholic or Lutheran because I think it would be pretty obvious if it was one of those. 
the building in front of me and the one that Marty's checking out is the public library. Surprisingly, they still have a public library here in Valentine. And according to the sign on the door, all you have to do is call the number and the librarian will be right over. Which is something we might do later on, because you know me, can't pass up an opportunity to check out a public library. Taking just a quick peek behind the building, we can see they have a really nice area set up for the locals. There's a place to shoot some hoops, sit around and hang out, chew the fat with the locals, and a spot for your kids to play while you're doing it too. Some of the other services that you can find in Valentine is the community complex, a volunteer fire department, and the Texas Department of Health Public Health Region 3 clinic, and there's City Hall. And it's my understanding that their mayor, Jesus Calderon, has been mayor for like 40 or 50 years. Like, probably one of the longest running mayors that a town has ever had. Here we can see that somebody's taken one of the adobe structures that's deteriorated and made it to their outdoor seating area. That's a pretty nifty idea or cool idea for how to reuse an abandoned structure. This one here, the roof is caved in, but you can still see the chimney standing. And if you look through the doorway, I think we can see an old stove laying on its side and the remains of the kitchen sink. This one here, the wall is starting to cave in. By the way, if you're looking for a place to stay out in the middle of nowhere, there's a place here in Valentine called Love Shacks. Without knowing too much about it, I'm guessing you get to stay in one of these lovely looking trailers. Or maybe even in one of the buildings there. Ten Bucks says you'll find this place on either Virbo or Airbnb, but I'm not a betting person, so You'll just have to look it up and then pay me the $10 if I'm right. And if I'm wrong, well, <laughs> just know that you had fun <laughs> playing the gambling game with Sightseeing Sally. It's called You Always Lose. <laughs> Up ahead is the Catholic Church in Valentine. Looks like they still might hold Mass here on Sundays at noon. And then next to the Catholic Church is a memorial for veterans, honoring all from Valentine who have served. You can see names on here going all the way back to the Korean War and World War I. If I'm not mistaken, this building used to be a grocery. And then next to that, you have some adobe houses. What's left of the Highway Cafe here in Valentine? You can see 7-Up painted on the side of the building and Coca-Cola painted on the front window. Check this out. It's an old Motorola stereo record changer in the window. Wonder if this was one of the places that was hit during the earthquake. Although I'm pretty sure they didn't have Motorola record players back in the 30s, so who knows? This could be one of those places that was hit, but then somebody dragged a bunch of junk into it though too. You can see the town is actually split down the middle by the highway that runs from Van Horn down to Marfa. Interestingly enough, like Marfa, Valentine is also movie famous. In 1997, a movie called Dancer, Texas Population 81 was filmed here and the surrounding area. Until early 2005, a building facade used in filming to represent the Oasis gas station still stood deserted alongside the roadway. If I'm not mistaken, this building here is an old service station. According to that sign, restrooms are to the left. Too bad that's not accurate, because after a day of filming, what I wouldn't give for a restroom right about now. Unfortunately though, I'm going to have to wait until we get back to Marfa. 
Another unfortunate thing is that our dreams of buying in Valentine have gone by the wayside as I'll let Marty explain. Well, for 30 grand, all you get is a plow down house and a 50 by 50 lot. And when I mean plow down, the time it rains, that's like sand. It just washes it right out. It's not even consistent. It's all over. Every time it rained, it just washed it out here. The back half of the house has no roof on it, as if half the front has no roof on it. And in half the house, there is no floors. And the half that does have a floor, it looks like a hoarder was living in here. And somebody really expects to get 30 grand for this place? Are you kidding me? I don't think you could pay me 30 grand to take this place. I mean, come on, realtors, let's do the math. You can go out in the desert here and buy 40 acres for under 30 grand. And besides that, you're also located right on the front of a very busy highway that passes through here. I mean, look at all the traffic coming through. Well, if nothing else, maybe Marty can be talked into buying that old school bus and converting it. And look, I think my bathroom troubles have been solved. When you gotta go, you gotta go, right? Just kidding. <laughs> just so we're clear, I was just kidding. Although, considering I haven't seen a soul out here, I bet I could get away with it. And speaking of souls, here's the other half of Valentine's Cemetery. Dismissing Valentine as another dying American town would be too easy. However, in the words of Joan Crawford, you have to be self-reliant and strong to survive in this town. Otherwise, you will be destroyed. Looks to me as if the people in Valentine are living proof Joan was right. What's that I hear in the background, Marty? Wiener dogs. And what's the real reason we came to Valentine? You get a wiener dog. <laughs> There's a story here, folks, but we're not gonna get into that now.